stories that matter. The journey of life from birth to death is an extraordinary trip, sometimes filled with great joy and excitement, but at other times filled with pain, sorrow, and disappointment. Stories That Matter shares both extremes with you. Sometimes our stories will make you feel very happy, but the journey of life is not all happiness. Other times, the journey of life will make you feel sad, for all of us have experienced both extremes. Stories That Matter will begin right after the break with a story that will touch your heart in the journey of life. Welcome to Stories That Matter. I'm your host, Doug Thompson, with my special guest, and I, you've met each of them before, but on my far right, which would be your left as you're looking at your screen, is Tina Price, and in the middle is Emily Barnes. And you guys have just been on a long trip that uh, most people never, ever get yeah. to go in their lifetime. Yeah. Where'd Absolutely. you go? Absolutely. Well, we took a trip to Ethiopia and Uganda in Africa. And we started the trip in Ethiopia. We spent about four days there. And then we traveled on to Uganda and spent probably 10 days there. Yeah, so it was, uh, we went with Man Up and Go, which is an organization that I went with last year. And um, their primary ministry is to educate, empower, and equip men to become leaders in the home. And so you say, okay, Emily and Tina are not men, <laughs> but um, what, after Man Up and Go had been going for several years, the women started to say, what about us? When will you come and present conferences for us? Help us to learn more about God. And so Man Up and Go last year started Woman Up and Go. And that's the trip that Emily and I went on this year. Woman Up and Go 2018. Okay, so was this the first time that the women went? This was the second, second year, time. the second annual. Okay, mm -hmm. I knew you went last year or uh -huh. earlier. So how many women were on this trip? We had, um, there ten? were 10 of us, 10 yeah. women and three men. <laughs> okay, well walk me through a little of this. You, you leave from where and you wind mm -hmm. up how many <laughs> days later before you get there? Sure, Emily, you wanna talk oh about our goodness. journey? <laughs> Uh, the journey was, it was interesting to say the least. Um, to get us there, God did some pretty amazing things. Uh, we actually had been scheduled to go to Kenya uh, back in December and that trip got canceled because of the unrest in the country. So we had a credit on our flights and so then they had to use that credit to get Tina and I to Africa when we went to Ethiopia and Uganda. So we couldn't fly with the team. Mm. We were flying just her and I. <laughs> So it was a little complicated in the amount of stops we had. I believe it took 36 hours total travel mm -hmm. to get us to Ethiopia, uh -huh. which is a lot more than it normally would. Um, you know, we went to, I'm trying to remember where we went first. Rome was our first overseas stop. Then we went to Turkey, Istanbul, Turkey, um, and then on into Addis Ababa. So. It was just a lot of travel and a little chaos in the Rome airport, but yeah. you know, God protected us. He got us there safely. Um, you know, it, it was it was quite an adventure. So where'd you fly out of in the states? Wichita. Wichita. We, we went, went to Wichita, Wichita, Wichita to Atlanta. Yeah. Okay. And, and then, then from Atlanta, Atlanta to Rome. Rome. Yeah. And then How Rome to Istanbul. Oh. Was that? 16 hours? Yeah, well. It's either 15 or 16 yeah. hours. Those I are think. the things you block wow. out of your memory, oh, Doug. Yeah, we <laughs> well, and rightfully so. I, I, I can't imagine. You block that long trip out. Yeah, yeah, being on an airplane for 16 hours. It's I intense. know my daughter just came mm -hmm. back from India on missions work, and she was on a flight 16, 17 hours. Yeah. And she said she slept pretty well. Were you guys able to sleep on the flight? I did okay uh, sleeping off and on, but bit, you know, yeah, you okay. have your own little TV in the in the back of the seat in front of you, and so you can play games or watch videos or watch, you know, television shows. Yeah. So yeah, we and, like to talk too. So we and just of said course a lot we of talk. Well, <laughs> probably annoyed all the other passengers around you. They, they didn't get any sleep. That's their story. <laughs> they gave them earplugs when they no, got okay, on the plane. Okay, that's good. <laughs> so then you wind up where? We wound, we ended up in Addis Ababa, which is the capital of Ethiopia, and um, we actually we stayed there overnight. Uh, the nighttime we stayed in Addis Ababa, but each morning we would get on a van and travel into Kora, which is a community that's at the base of one of the largest trash mountains. It's a dump um, in 
Ethiopia. And the history of that is about 75 years ago, the king of the land said, I want all of the filth out of my country. And so he, he included not only the trash, but the people who had leprosy or disease, deformities, he banished them all out of the city. And so that was 75 years ago. They believe that those people are cursed and that's why the king wanted them out of his city. And so for 75 years, you had people surviving by any way, any means that they can, digging in the dump for food each day, looking for scraps of material to build homes out of. You know, they have live in these kind of like tent-like homes. And uh, there's over 130,000 people that live there today. 130,000 people live around Trash mountain? In, in Absol the yes. Mm -hmm. how, how many of the how many mountains of trash are there that make up Trash Mountain, or it's is it one, one huge, huge mountain? mountain? And you know, um, uh, you'll probably see a picture on the screen. Um, if we zoom in on that picture of the entire mountain, you see a man that looks the size of an ant in perspective to how huge the mountain is. And then, you know, for me, one of the most horrifying things was to see the movement on top of the mountain. And in my, you know, my human reasoning, I'm going, this must be some kind of big vultures or scavenger animals or something. But then the translator and um, one of the women who works for Brook Hills, um, what's that? Brook Hills Development, Development yeah, um, the ministry that we worked with, told us those are people up there. And then we looked closely and we saw there are humans up there looking for food. You know, I want to I want to come right back to that. We've got to cut away, take a break. I'm already late with it, but we're going to cut away, take a break. When we come back, we're going to talk more about Trash Mountain because mm -hmm. this is unbelievable. Unbelievable. We'll be right back. You're watching Stories That Matter. <music> Welcome back to Stories That Matter. I'm your host, Doug Thompson, with Tina Price and Emily Barnes. And as you can tell as you're watching this, I'm looking at, uh, this is Tina's phone, and we're talking about Trash Mountain outside of, what's the name of the town? Addis Ababa, mm -hmm. the capital of Ethiopia. And the community's Cora. Mm -hmm. And if you missed the first segment, the king, 75 years ago in Ethiopia, determined that get rid of the trash. And the trash not only included physical trash, but it also included people. Mm -hmm and uh, we're looking at one of the pictures. I'm looking at it here. It's on your screen right now. And so what you're seeing is that's Trash Mountain. And those very little things that look like little images at the top of the mountain are people, yeah. right beside yes. the yeah. uh, bulldozer who's pushing the trash up over the mountain mm -hmm. and down to the lower part. Mm -hmm. And so this is how some people survive, 130,000 people, is that how many? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's their best estimate right now, that there are over 130,000 people living there. Mm -hmm. They still have a very active leper colony, so leprosy is still rampant there. HIV, AIDS, mm -hmm. so women, any, women that are single with children. Mm -hmm. yeah. They get cast out into oh, yeah. that too mm -hmm. because... Yes. They mm -hmm. The people in um, Addis Ababa believe that those people are cursed. Cursed mm -hmm. and possessed or... Just cursed just is cursed. what the word that they used for us. Wow. Wow, and so where do these people live? Because they obviously come out here to get food as soon as the trash truck leaves. Mm -hmm. Why then they get food, but where do they Where do they live? Where do they get out of the elements? Emily, what happens to them? Well, they um, use uh, sticks and like tarps that I'm sure they pull from the trash mountain, and they build these little homes, um, which I've got some pictures I've sent to you guys. You'll see um, some people in front of their little homes, but I mean, it's nothing more than the size of maybe a double bed like a, the mattress of a double bed, and it's just, um, you know, a tent or a, a tarp put over four sticks that they've managed to, mm. you know, make work together. Piece and together, yeah. Piece together, yeah. And it's, you know, it's a hard thing to see. It oh, really is, so but yeah, there's another picture of some of them, and they'll just be side by side, um, multiple, and they'll usually have just a sheet in front to cover for a little privacy. Mm -hmm. Um, well, these are just like blue tarps that we would exactly. throw away when they get a little hole mm -hmm. in it or yeah. something. That's all it is, and that's their, that's that's their, their home. home. That's their home. Yep. Sheets of metal that they found in the dump, pieces of cardboard, yeah, mud, uh, sticks. How, how did you guys feel when you saw this? 
It, Heartbroken? It broke me. Absolutely. It, it, it broke me. Mm -hmm. I think knowing the history behind, there was a, there was actually a uh, slide that happened, a landslide that happened at that mountain um, a year ago, and it killed so it over a hundred people in 2017. People. Trash sliding and the yeah. trash buried slid like an avalanche. And it did, and the hardest part for me, I think, was knowing that they died there and that's where they stayed. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, they were just covered there. over. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. The bulldozers came in and just pushed all the trash, bodies included, right back mm -hmm. up into the heap. Yeah. How, how does a, an organized, I'm asking some questions you've already asked yourselves, but how does an organized government allow this, do this? Yeah. They are just forgotten people. I have to tell you, there's a sunset that I saw. Um, it was a couple days into the trip when we were walking to one of the other organizations, uh, Carry 117, that has a place there. and. I'm just looking down this road that leads straight to the Trash Mountain and the sun is setting behind it and it's a beautiful sunset but I realize what it's setting behind is this Trash Mountain and it just was so hard. I think the people have just forgotten. They just want to mm -hmm. forget. They don't want to even realize mm -hmm. it. I mean mm -hmm. it's just yeah. I, it's a hard thing. You know that's why great great organizations like Carry 117 and and Brook Hills Development Center or development organization came in and they are trying to help empower these people by giving them job opportunities or finding sponsorship for mm -hmm. families. Um, you know, that was kind of my story with, with that place. These sweet boys um, right here, Mogus and Wally, um, their mother was actually killed in the trash uh, dump. She was ran over by a bulldozer. And so these two boys, I believe at nine and 11 years old, had no one. I mean, they were on the streets. Were so they there too when yeah, she they was saw run over? Her, yeah, they saw it happen. So for them, and then uh, besides uh, the one in the yellow, if you show the picture. Um, it's on the screen now. Okay, he has a heart disease. And so I was so pulled to help these boys um, with sponsorship. And, and there's multiple families that sponsor them because of Mogus's heart condition. Um, and me being someone who's seen heart disease a lot in my family, I just felt very pulled to help them. But I couldn't imagine losing my mother, let alone seeing it um, happen. And so these boys are so precious and you'll see their sweet smiles on their face. Mm -hmm. um, they're just so loving. In fact, they yeah. actually told me that they loved me and I thought they don't even know me, you know, mm -hmm. and they just, they're full of love and joy and, and they know that God is helping them by getting them out of this uh, situation that they lived in and they live in a nicer, home yeah, what did I got Mugus to say? visit. What did Mugus say when someone asked him about if he was afraid of dying? Because he oh, literally needs right. a heart transplant, yes, right? Yes, he said, I'm not afraid to die because I know where I'm going. Awesome. So, mm -hmm. you know, to But he have, knows where he's going yeah, because he knows Jesus of Brook Hills Development. Mm -hmm. They are sharing Jesus yeah. with these people. Their so only hope. Would Brook Hills Development be a, like a sponsor for these two kids? They, they're the ones that funnel the money in for them and then manage it to get them into a safer mm -hmm. home. Uh, the boys actually have a um, what's it called? A mm -hmm. nanny that mm -hmm. stays with them and it helps with all the medications and different things. That like Brook that. Hills employs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The Brook Hills is on the ground. Yeah. I mean, their office is right there in they're Cora. On the bottom of the mountain. Yeah. So these boys right here, they're far better off oh, yes. than, than most of the people because they're dressed reasonably yes. uh, very well mm -hmm. uh -huh. and they look uh, as though they've been eating. Mm -hmm. yeah. Most of the people that are living on That's Trash right. Mountain mm -hmm. don't yeah. have yeah. this sort of yeah. an appearance. Am I right? Yeah. Uh -huh. They don't have clothes. They, they, uh -huh. they don't have... Uh, they have what they found in the dump. Yeah. That's yeah. what they have. Rags well, yeah. 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 All right. Absolutely. We got to cut away. Take a break. You're watching Stories That Matter. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Stories That Matter. I'm your host, Doug Thompson, with Tina Price, Emily Barnes, and they just, we're, we're looking at some tough, tough footage of Trash Mountain uh, in Ethiopia, and well, if you haven't got the uh, first part of this, you're going to want to watch for one of the replays of the show because this is absolutely amazing. 130,000 people live around Trash Mountain where the garbage gets dumped. 130,000 people are just abandoned. Nobody else cares about them. Tina and Emily were there and got to see this for themselves. Mm -hmm. You knew about Trash Mountain, the concept of it, mm -hmm. but until you actually saw it. You cannot even comprehend it. You can't. I mean, you just stand there and 
every one of your senses begins to reel as you're trying to process what you're seeing. In fact, we had promised we'd blog while we were away. Couldn't, couldn't do it. it because we couldn't process what we were taking in. It was yeah. so inhumane, so unbelievable that you couldn't put it to words. But what was amazing is like Emily talked about the joy that you saw in the people's faces mm -hmm. and the because love. Um, the joy, I believe, was because we came. Somebody yeah. we cared. came to them and that conveyed to them immensely that they are cared about and over and over we told them we are here because we prayed and God told us to come and tell you that you are not forgotten. When we did the VBS's um, at Brook Hills it was just to see those children sing and worship the Lord the way they did and to see their eyes you know just light up I mean it's Christ that's doing that and it's if anything it's them seeing Christ within us loving on mm -hmm. them it was just such a beautiful thing mm -hmm. it was yeah. it was absolutely beautiful we got to do some home visits Brook Hills Development has a program for pregnant women because obviously there are lots of pregnant women in fact most of the women it, that live in Cora around the trash mountain are um, have been given over to prostitution so they're being trafficked and that really is the way that they're making their money um, so they have a, a program for pregnant women where they go in and they teach them some childbirth some prenatal care they have some medical care for them they have doulas that are kind of like midwives mm -hmm. that go in and you know keep checking on them and their baby making sure they're having food for nourishment we got to meet this one woman named work a and uh, when we first met her, she just looked, she was sitting cross-legged, slumped over, looking very empty inside, not just hopeless, but void mm -hmm. and empty. Her three-year-old child was sitting quietly beside her. I'm sure he probably is malnourished and had no energy to move. So he had no toys or electronics around him like American children would have. And then in this heap of blankets off to her other side, we saw some movement under a little mosquito net. There was an infant child only three weeks old. Anyway, so we, um, I had the privilege of sharing with Work A. She is a prostitute. She has been abandoned by her family. She has been abused as a child. And you know my story, Doug. I shared some of my childhood abuse story with her. And then I asked her if she knew who Jesus was. And then we talked a little bit about, I shared the gospel with her. And then the translator's there translating the whole time. And the translator looks at us and says, she believes and she wants to repent. And we went, what? what? Like <laughs> right now? That's how ready because she, she was. Because she knew. She knew that you had walked where she yes. has yeah. been. And for, for the first time, we saw some life oh. in her eyes. And then we got to go back and visit her a couple days later. She was the first one who spoke to us, embraced us, and gave the traditional cheek-to-cheek -cheek hug. And then she said, since you came, I have had hope. And then, of course, we told her, you have Jesus. But that gift of presence that we were willing to sacrifice, you know, the hard trip, the comforts of America, you know, we did not sleep or eat in the best ways while we were there, is not a vacation, um, spoke volumes to her. I mean, that God must love her to send these people to me you know, mm -hmm. and let it was just beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I felt like that but was said so much to let them know that God has not forgotten them. Mm -hmm. You know, just yeah. yeah. And then, and then what happens? Oh, when Tina and Emily. Well, leave. again, like Emily spoke about, there's the sponsorship program. So Brook Hills stays on the ground. They will disciple this woman. They will make sure she has a um, a staple of food weekly. They will um, help her to. Uh, even earn a skill like she told us she said I despise prostitution sure. I don't want to do it mm -hmm. but I have nothing to provide for my children and so you know uh, my friend and I actually the woman who led me to the Lord Mama Jeanette mm -hmm. um, she came on the trip with us and her and I were in there and we agreed that we would sponsor her and for just fifty dollars a month they will get her a new place to live they will be able to provide medical expenses for her and her children, the staple of food like I talked about, and the discipleship. And she will not have to do prostitution anymore. For $50 a month, we're going to keep this woman off the street. My husband and I said, we will give up one meal out, mm -hmm. you know, because 50 bucks a month for our family, mm -hmm. you know, eating out, we'll sacrifice it so that that woman will not have to walk the street again. So when you guys came in and you told her that uh, Jesus knows about you and uh, sent us over, 
She saw Jesus. She did. She saw. She, did. she saw what she Jesus believed. looked like. That's exactly what the translator said. She believes and she wants to repent. And we went, R- what? <laughs> yeah. She was ready. God has prepared the hearts of all these people. We just get the privilege of being his hands and feet and mouthpiece to go and to share him with them. And that was it. I mean, like, you, you know, mission trips, we think we're going over big sacrifice, big service. Oh, no, it's so much more for us. Yeah. I would say the amount of strength that the Lord provided for us on our trip was just beautiful. I mean, I, you would be so shocked at how much we did mm-hmm. from sun up till sundown. And I think, you know, this this body isn't young anymore. Mm-hmm. And, and he provided strength <laughs> for us to do so much mm-hmm. to help these people and love yeah. on them. And um, but it is hard sometimes because there's I mean, there's a uh, hundred and thirty thousand people there. And, and you're like, I can't help everyone. But God didn't ca- tell, call each of us to help everyone. He called each of us to help someone. Yeah. So I think you really have to look at it that mm-hmm. way and, and going mm-hmm. in and, and doing what he calls you yeah. specifically to yeah. do to help. Well, I would think there would be that feeling going into it when you walk over and you look at this and you see the people on top of Trash Mountain digging through mm-hmm. and you say, well, what what can I even do? Yeah. How, oh. Where do you even mm-hmm. start? I felt like I was constantly on the brink of falling, toppling over into despair. But, mm-hmm. you know, the Lord kept reminding yeah. me. In fact, he gave me a vision where I actually saw Jesus walking through the whole mountain in and around yes. the mountain. He's there. He's there. He is there. And like we talked about, Carrie 117 employs women off of Trash Mountain to make leather bags and um, different toilet purses, tr- purses and, and stuff mm-hmm. like that. And so Carrie 117 is striving to to help these women change the mindset of poverty. Man Up and Go is striving to help them change the mind. It's a whole mindset mm-hmm. of poverty that has to be oh, broken. Oh, I can imagine. Their can value. Imagine. They think they're trash. We've got to cut away, take a break. You're watching Stories That Matter. Welcome back to Stories That Matter. I'm your host, Doug Thompson, with my special guest, Tina Price and Emily Barnes. And we've been talking about Trash Mountain, your trip to Ethiopia, and what appears to be the hopelessness of of 130,000 people. But uh, sometimes people like Tina and Emily come in and they help one. And that one helps uh, two others that she had a three-week-old and a three-year-old. And then some others are coming in to help a few more. And that's how you get into that fight. Tell me about this here because we don't have a whole lot of time. But are these things that the 130,000 people, somebody in that group of Mm -hmm. 130,000, Made, made some of these yeah. multiple people. Yeah, this happens in Ethiopia and Uganda. Um, in fact, when we were in Uganda, I had a necklace on, and this woman grabbed a hold of me so tightly and jumped, and we were jumping up and down, and she was celebrating and saying something and pointing to my necklace. She made my necklace. Yeah. And so that was beautiful. Um, but uh, there's a picture of a woman weaving on your screen. They make these little um, trivets. Are these called trivets? Yep. They you know, sell those in the marketplaces, like I said Brook Hills Development and Carry 117 are doing what they can to market this stuff out so that these artisans let's call them what they are mm-hmm. I mean they're artisans mm-hmm. they're designing and and creating these jewels to can yeah to provide for their family yeah so it's awesome that you can be a part of supporting fair trade you know um, organizations that are are getting it out and there are Etsy shops you know we can uh, give you the links to some of that if you want to put it up on we'll put it up on the, the screen, screen. Mm-hmm. we'll put it up on the screen great wish Christmas we, presents wish, yeah, yeah absolutely <laughs> wish we had more time but that's going to take care of it for stories that matter and you can watch for uh, part two that'll be coming up uh, probably the week following this and thank you for watching special guest Tina Price Emily Barnes thank you mm-hmm.